Uh, okay, there's the Ainsley circuit, and there is the 555 timer circuit hooked up to provide the pulses, and I've put a switch in there so that I can switch the pulse input to the circuit from either the 555 timer or the function generator, the F34 function generator. Okay, now what I've got on this oscilloscope down here is uh, the top trace right there is the function generator and uh, let's see see there so that's the function generator and so we have it going from its uh, baseline Pulse a little bit longer there. Okay, so pulse up, down, long off time, up, down, like that. And uh, those pulses are just about 10 volts from the baseline to the peak. And I'm going to turn that channel off momentarily. Boom. And you see that the baseline stays put there, so that indicates where zero volts are there, going like that. Okay. Now the bottom trace here, this one, that trace is coming from the 555 timer here. And we have a duty cycle and frequency and rough attenuation. So I'm going to tweak this control while I show you what it does to the duty cycle. There. And I'll tweak the other control to show you that I can vary the frequency like that. Okay. And then I'll go back up to the oscilloscope and I'll superimpose those two pulses to show that they are at just about the same frequency, very close, and the same amplitude. And I've got the voltage scales set uh, at the same voltage values. So both of those are the same peaks, same frequency from the function generator and the 555. And you can see let me change the time base here so we can just look at one wave. You can see that the waveforms are very similar. From the, the 555 has a little bit less squareness at the bottom and this one's a little bit less square at the top, but basically they look very close to being the same. Right? Okay, now down here on this oscilloscope we have the input current that is the voltage drop across the current viewing resistor and then we also have the load output which is here that's channel A is the load and channel B is the input current the important parameter okay so now what I'll do is I'll crank up the gain here and we'll see there. We're running on the function generator right now so we see uh, pretty much what I showed before. We see that as I get to the full crank, cranked up here we start seeing that um, spikiness on the trailing edge of the pulse. Now the load the, is uh, if I turn uh, if, if I simply uh, unplug the battery you can see that the load goes from a positive voltage which is the, the 22 volt battery voltage to a lesser voltage when the MOSFET is on 
So when the battery voltage is high, the load isn't conducting anything. Uh, and when the MOSFET turns on, that opens a circuit to ground through the load, so the voltage drops, and this represents current conduction through the load. This is when the MOSFET is on up here, and this is the input that we're concerned about. Now I'm just going to, I've got everything set up, right? I've got the Ainsley circuit parameters set. I've got the two function, the 555 and the function generator set. Now all I have to do to compare is to switch that little switch, which will switch the input from the function generator to the 555. So here we go. I'm going to switch it now. Boing. Whoa! Look at that. Oh, one other thing that I wanted to tell you before I do that switch is over here we have a resistor, or a thermocouple rather, monitoring the load. And it's about 25, 26 degrees right now. <clears throat> and it's been stable at that while we're running at this uh, less than 5% duty cycle. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the 555. Boing! We see a radical change there, and we immediately see, or we should see, that the load starts to get warm. Certainly the MOSFET is already getting warm, and our input battery voltage has dropped down. And that's a real, <clears throat> a real drop. These batteries are just about discharged. Now you can see that the load is warming up. So what's going on here? What exactly is the difference between this state, driven by the function generator, and this state, driven by the 555? It took me a couple of seconds to figure this out. Okay. When we're driving, when we're driving by the 555, the spikiness is moved to the leading edge of the pulse. Very weird, huh? And look, the temperature is uh, rising in there. The MOSFET is almost too hot to touch, and the battery voltage, these worn-out batteries, the battery voltage has dropped considerably. So, uh, what's happening? Have we really discovered f free energy, or? Have we discovered something else? And here's what's happened. This looks like the same duty cycle, doesn't it? But what's this voltage down here? If I turn this channel off, boom, that line goes all the way up. That's zero voltage. So this represents actually an on duty cycle and I have my invert switch in the invert position so if I flip that to the correct position I have to figure to flip the triggering now now we see a completely different story we see the voltage actually goes from high to low and that 555 circuit is actually producing a mostly on duty cycle and slightly off. So this is actually about a 95% on cycle instead of a 5% on cycle like this. So when that cycle is applied to the load or to the Ainsley circuit, boom, well the exact same thing happens here. Now the MOSFET is on, off, on. Now the load is off, or rather on, off, on. So now the load naturally heats up because it's running at a 95% duty cycle. And for 95% of the time, it's looking like a dead short to those batteries, just about. So the load heats, and uh, the input energy is badly miscalculated because of this inverted waveform problem.